I had the great privilege many years ago of being able to work with uh, my mentor, Joel Meyerson, uh, at the University of South Carolina in editing Bronson Alcott's uh, Temple School journals. He took uh, notes, uh, obviously, he kept a journal like most transcendentalists, many romantics did, uh, but in this particular set of uh, notes, he was uh, recording his daily observations uh, about the school that he opened. Bronson Alcott, daddy of Louisa, opened the Temple School in Boston in 1834. They called it the Temple School because it was uh, based in the Masonic Temple, a Masonic Lodge, um, didn't have any religious overtones at all. Um, and one of the things that I think is very sad um, in American educational history is how little credit Bronson Alcott gets for his tremendous contributions, even though he was, shall we say, rather a flake, um, and a little not so grounded in um, the here and now, a little bit of a philosopher kind of out there a bit, um, and certainly had some ideas that were more than a little bit radical. Uh, he founded the school in 1834. It lasted until about, really about 1840 or so, but um, about midway through its history, it reached a crisis point, which we'll speak about in a moment. The method that he used, quite innovative, was inductive and Socratic. Socratic's not so radical, but these were small children. These were anywhere from what we would call kindergartners. Kindergarten wasn't introduced into the United States uh, until sort of, uh, German educators came along in the later 19th century, but about five, six, seven years of age, all the way up through uh, almost middle school. Were the, and about 20 students were at the school. Uh, Elizabeth Palmer Peabody and then later Margaret Fuller uh, worked with him at the school. And uh, it was an integrated school. Uh, it had African American children as well as Caucasian children there. And it was quite um, progressive, quite radical, if you will, in many respects. It was inductive, and you and I may think that this is perfectly uh, good, sound pedagogy, but at the time it was considered quite odd. Uh, you know, education, you can go and take a look at some wonderful scholarship that's been done on especially college level uh, rhetorical instruction or maybe even high school primary what they used to call grammar school instruction and it was largely rote memorization I mean the kids were given the book you memorized the book then you were asked questions about it if you didn't get the answer right you got whacked on the head by a stick uh, this was pretty much the methodology of the day um, and it was one reason why Thoreau and Emerson were down on Harvard instruction uh, Thoreau thought that Harvard was incredibly antiquated, really hated the, the, uh, the type of instruction he received. Uh, grammar school, by the way, was called grammar not because you studied English grammar, but because you studied Latin grammar. Um, and so that you would study uh, history, grammar, mathematics, and these things. It was largely a matter of just memorizing stuff and then just regurgitating it on paper. And so what Alcott was doing is very, very modern. Uh, he would ask students questions. He would allow the class to arrive at conclusions or answers together through conversation, through dialectic, through an investigative sort of conversation. And so that's what he was trying to record. He was really about trying to find out what the students were capable of. So both Fuller and uh, Emerson, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, um, uh, Peabody uh, worked with him at the school. Uh, Peabody especially took a lot of the notes and published them as a, uh, a small book called Record of a School in 1835. And this was kind of a way of sort of advertising for the school. Also, it was giving, as we'll see in the next slide, um, uh, a, a sort of fundamental philosophical basis for why we do what we do at, at Mr. Alcott's school. Uh, he followed that up with conversations with children on the Gospels, a record of his classroom conversations with children in the class about the, their readings in the New Testament. Um, it really is just as uh, as a, as a uh, as an experiment, the school really was just as much interested in performing an experiment on the students uh, as in pioneering new pedagogical approaches. So what he was really wanting to find out was what do students know and when do they know it? And then a deeper question, how do they know it? And a deeper question still, why do they know it? Okay, um, so you know when we talk about some of the things that he did uh, with Peabody's record and with his conversations text and what we find in those texts and what they say they did in the classroom, always bear in mind that there's some sort of philosophical basis that informs the pedagogy that they're employing in the classroom.